And when I look at Maguire, I was a, I'm not going to lie, I was a fan of Maguire. Do you know what I mean? I was somebody that was saying, yo, bring Maguire in. Like, that's a great sign. I liked him from whole days. Like, so I'm not one of them ones that's going to turn around at like, I never rated him. Yeah. But he's come to Man United and honestly, he's, he's fell off a cliff. Like, this is a complete, this hasn't got anything to do with coaching. He, some of his mistakes are individual errors. Some of his mistakes are just, I just don't think he's, some people are just meant for the lower, kind of the lower, less pressure. You're not always on TV. You're not always going to be seen. You make a mistake. Nobody's watching. It doesn't go in the newspapers. All of a sudden, you come to Man United, and honestly, you 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 do something. You run funny. You're going to become a meme. You you do. No, I, 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 I do. That. I, of, do. You know, I don't think he's. I don't think he's. I don't think he's adjusted to that. And especially given him the captaincy, I was like, do you know what? Fair enough. Um, we ain't gotten much leaders. Bring him in. He's got the captaincy, whatever. But he clearly he's not. He's not Manchester. He's not a Manchester United captain. All, of, all in all, it's been a bad signing. And I was never co-signing the Wan Bissaka signing. He's not technically good enough to play for Man United, and it's showing. And I get that with on Maguire. The only thing that I struggle with with the whole conversation that he has made two or three bad errors. I've seen it that I remember in a Man United shirt. That the goal for the Tottenham game the other day is a, is a prime example of what I call a bad error. The the way he got nutmegged in the Bournemouth game, I think, was poor defending because he rushed in. There are some things where I think are unfair. That the marking his own player in Zaha, right? one had nothing to do with the goal, and he yeah. wasn't pushing someone out of the way. The no look defending, he was he was stopping the cutback to the player. <laughs> he, those things there are really unfair on him. I think but the only, I'm a, I am a stats man. I do, use the eye test, so I get the technical element. But what I struggle with when it comes to Maguire is there's a few areas when people say he's not good enough. One. Our defensive record, is a, especially when people say he's not good enough and nor's the system under Oli, our defensive record last season improved in all defensive metrics for around 40%. It needed double the amount of, over double the amount of clean sheets, 40% less goals conceded, about 43% less goals conceded from op open play as an example. Mm -hmm. Just to name a few of even attempts on our goal dropped by 47% last season. Yeah. If AWB were part of that, so is the system. So you have to have some kind of system and qualities as players to make those improvements. And when we had that really good run, the back end of the season, and I think Pogba coming back and Bruno being part of the team are, are part of that, but so are all great teams. Uh, we barely conceded a goal in that entire run. I think we had something like 13 clean sheets in about 19 games. The start of this season, I, I, I'm not, you can't defend it. There is no defending it. The, the team has been bad. I don't understand how you can be that bad a defender when your team improved defensively that much. Your defensive mm. record in, in a run that sees a 14 point swing to put you back into the Champions League and his individual metrics. So when you look at his defensive duels, he attempts the same amount per game as Van Dyke wins one percent mm. more aerial jewels are there. The defenders, though, I'm not. I don't really buy into the stats of defenders. I can't lie. But what do you mean, though? So, for me, and that's a fair point. What I mean by that is, though, but if I if I have a player like him, so defensive duels are categorized as those. You know what he did against Harry Kane, where he pushed the man over. That's called yeah. a defensive duel, as opposed to a tackle. They separate them. He attempts about seven of them per game, and no one in the Premier League in the last two years has won more than them, more of them than than him. So I look at it, well, that's that's important that a defender does that. And I get that some stats they can inflate. Last yeah. year, I think Van Dyke only got dribbled past five times and people <laughs> celebrated it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Lindelof only got dribbled past about three times last season. Yeah. So you have to take everything in context. But when you look at all the defensive metrics for a defender and compare Maguire's against all the other elite defenders in Europe. He's on par with all of them and better than some of them in certain areas. I, yeah. I, just, I, I think what it is, brother, and one thing you pulled on, the man is ugly. Not physically to look at. I don't care about that. Like, he he's is, under, well, he, physically he, as well. <laughs> so I suppose my question to you would be, if his defensive statistics and the team statistics and outputs defensively have improved so much, can he really be considered that bad a signing? So for me, look, I was the I was one of them ones who last season I was because I was a fan of him and I was trying to stick by him. I yeah. was ignoring a lot of the 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 poor defensive work. I was ignoring a lot of the mistakes because not every mistake is a goal. Do you know what I mean? There was times Maguire is getting pinned by smaller players and turned, and people are walking past him, and not everything is a goal. Do you know what I mean? So. I would. Is there time, even in that run that May Night were going well and keeping clean sheets? Could you say to yourself that you were, you were felt comfortable every single game that Maguire and Lind? I I couldn't. I, some of them clean sheets. I was watching. I was like, I don't know how we even. I don't know how we didn't concede that game. Do you know what I mean? We got away with it. I was. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. 
I mean, yeah. said that, go back and watch. I'm not that you're going to. This is yeah. more rhetorical. If you go back and watch a lot of my watch alongs, I was sitting here. This is January, February, March, before lockdown, afterwards. I was sitting again. I, I always feel comfortable with Maguire. I've never felt too much of an issue with him. And of course, there are moments in games where we nearly concede. But I think yeah. that's a, a Man United issue in the sense of when you watch your own team, you sometimes feel like you're under more pressure than how rivals see it. Because I'd watch, I watch a Liverpool game and I'm like, last year when they were brilliant, I'm thinking, no one, no one lays a glove on them. And then you look at the reaction of Liverpool fans on socials. They're like, oh, I got away with that one. And mm. don't look at it, I don't know. Maybe we look at United differently from, from other people. But I, I get your point. Do we need to improve defensively? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I think all of Oli's signings have been bad? Dan James has, but at 15 million quid, I'm not bothered by it. Does that make sense? I get you. Uh, Gallo with a fourth choice backup striker did a decent job. Mm. Uh, AWB, yeah, he isn't good enough going forward. That there is, there is no doubt about that. But it's interesting that that only be became a problem in the last few months. The first four or five months, everyone was loving what he did defensively. Why do you mm. think that changed? What I think is, uh, do you know what it is? Is because when he came in, of course, he's done something that we haven't seen before. You mm. know what I mean? Like if you look at the right backs that United have had, we've had Valencia, Rafael, Gary Neville, and stuff. All good defenders. But at the same time, the way wan defends, he defends in a way... He's a highlight defender. Do you know what I mean? Those slide tackles are amazing. 1v1, I can never disrespect him. 1v1, I yeah. think he'll give any winger in the world a problem. Do you know what I mean? He will do well against anyone, like, through a 90-minute game. But his tackling is so spectacular, and it, it gets you off your feet. It excites you. The wan is defending, it excites you. But you need more after a while. Do you know what I mean? After a while, you come to Man United at, at Crystal Palace. That's beautiful. That's nice. You can do all of that. When you come to a bigger team, we expect a little bit more. And this is the situation that Maguire and wan are facing. You More is expected of you. You can't come in and just be what you were at Palace and just be what you are at Leicester. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that may be your bread and butter, but this is Man United. You've got to give us extra 25%, extra 30%. And unfortunately for wan that 25-30% is how good are you on the ball. You're going to be an outlet most of the times, especially when you have a winger like Daniel James or especially when you have a winger like Greenwood, who's not a winger at, this, at the same time. So you're going to get a lot of the ball. And I'm not even too bothered about the way he crosses and stuff. That that happens. You know what I mean? You can learn how to cross, but the the touches, the fact that, you, that teams are letting our, our fullback have the ball to initiate their press, that's embarrassing, man. That's I'm embarrassing. Not, can, that. This is why I question Ole, though. Sorry, Terry. This is why I question Ole. It's like, you said that you want your team to be fast, attacking, wide, aggressive, on the ball, right? Play out from the back. You can't sign wan if you want to play out the back. That was a safe signing. That was, who's a good right back in the Premier League? Oh, wan he's young. All right, let's grab him. Now, let's make him something he's not. Because I'm telling you now, he will never, ever be an attacking fullback, ever. And, and you know what? I, and I, I, can, I can accept that. I can accept that he's never going to be at the, at the Trent or Alex Tellis level of, of, of doing those things. I, the one thing I really like what you pulled out on is that, you know, the spectacular tackles make people think he's better than he really is. I can't, dis I can't disagree with that logic based on the fact that I have a big problem with football fans who love, I know he's got a brace against us, but I still don't think he's very good. A Wilf, Wilfred Zaha players annoy me. Players that tackle themselves more than they beat a man. But people think they're great because what they do is spectacular. Does that make sense? Yeah. They, they'll do a dribble and it's like, wow, he's amazing. I'm like, bro, the cross went out for a throw-in. What are you talking yeah. about? Like, I get where you're coming from a very WB, but I, what I also love is the fickleness of football fans. Mm -hmm. Because up until about two months ago, United fans haven't mentioned Delo's name for ages. Now mm. the agenda is we need a better attacking fullback, and it's like bring Delow back in. I'm like, bro, that yeah. guy though is he, he, he's he is awful defense. You can't have him in the team. He's terrible in terms of his defensive attributes. But look, I get the point with with AWB. I think there are definite elements he's got to improve on, and if you can't see him improving, um, uh, th then from your point of view, what what what's the what's the point of him having him in there? Like you got to be like, let's be honest. I, I tweeted it the other day. He's England's. What seventh choice right back at this point? They've got it about it looks like he's going to play for the Congo now, anyway. To be fair, I mean, it, 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 this is what I mean. Like, listen, you're Manchester United player and you couldn't even lay a glove to play for our team, our fullbacks, Luke Shaw. I know we just signed someone to replace him, but he's not even an England international himself. And you got Luke, and you got Wan Bissaka, not an England international. Like, 
what is going on? This isn't the standard, bro. And yeah, I'm trying to say this isn't the standard. And I'm happy that we've signed someone to try and maybe put pressure on him. But in my opinion, the only way Wamsaka is going to be able to, we're going to be able to get away with having Wamsaka is if we sign a fullback, I mean, a, a winger who's literally so good at 1v1s, taking play people on and can ho hold down a whole right wing by himself. And you don't really get that. I'm telling you now, what top team in the world don't have attacking fullbacks? We're in living in ancient times, man. We're living it. People are talking about coaching, but I'm telling you, technical ability can't just be coached like that. Yes, you can you're talking about what positions he gets in, but when he's on the ball, it's not good enough. It's just not. I'm, I'm, and, and I, I understand it. I still personally think he can do a job for us, but I think what was needed is that Sancho signing. We, the only way you get away, I think, with having a fullback like AWB, who is brilliant, in my opinion, defensively, but in terms of going forward, has his deficiencies, is by having someone on that right-hand side who is an opponent, a potent attacker that can hug, hug that touchline and, and operate there. And I think failing to get Jaden Sancho, it's going to be really unfortunate for AWB. Because I, think, I think what happens a lot in football, is, I'll give you an example. Paul Pogba, I love Paul Pogba. There's so much I love about him, but I prefer seeing him up the other end of the pitch than, than near our goal. Paul Pogba in possession... Anywhere near Man United's box worries me because he's not very, he's not press resistant. He just he loses the ball in those areas too much. I get frustrated so much that we have players where we don't have a balanced team from front to back, and you you feel you see the deficiencies of our players. Maguire is a great example. Man doesn't play on the left hand side of a defense. He is. You speak to anyone who's coached him. He's like, no, this guy needs to be on the right hand side. But because we don't have a left sided uh, centre back. He oh, did, play. At Leicester, he was on the left as well, though. When he had the left at Leicester, he, he played bits and pieces there. But I've, I'm going by what I've I thought he was on the left, and I've, I've listened to a few different coaches that were talking. A few people from the England set up saying he should be on the right hand side. He gets exposed because he has to go out onto his left foot a lot. And I'm mm. like, okay, I can take that as an excuse. Where I get frustrated is, then why haven't we bought someone to to, to plug that hole in the team? If, if you get yeah. where I'm coming from, like if you if yeah. he struggles there then buy someone that can play there and move him over. If you know that AWB struggles from an attacking sense, how have we gone a whole summer without signing somebody that attacks on the right-hand side? Mm -hmm. Now what happens is there's more focus on AWB because mm. we, he's the guy that we need to attack. And we know Greenwood does a good job, but Greenwood's going to cut inside because he's a central striker. Now, I don't want to see Paul Pogba dilly-dallying with the ball on the edge of the box. Give us a party. Give us an Ndidi who, who yeah. are brilliant at doing that and that's the problem that's where i then look at the board because for me if there was a football decision making board they would see these deficiencies they would make the right signings you would hope and and, and kind of fix this in terms of managers